Spite's been in development since 2006, and there's always been a roadmap and a plan for Gen 4 and beyond. So I like to think of Frostbite as an evolutionary process, and Frostbite 3 is the next step in that evolution. Frostbite 3 is a, a really powerful tool set. A gamer is going to experience a much more authentic, believable, and realistic looking game. We have one unified program where you can create content that will run on everything from an iPhone to a next-gen console. And now it's really coming online and enabling the game designers to do way more than they've ever been able to do before. We spend significant effort on creating more dynamic and living environments. Before, they would have to go to a lot of work to make a tree feel like it swayed in the wind. Now we give them the tools to create the tree, and we let the game engine control how the wind affects that tree. Frostbite allows everything to work together. The waves on the beach, the wind blowing the white caps, even the clouds overhead all move consistently with the forces of nature. You might see an explosion go off, you'll see the trees nearby shake from the explosion. It's sort of subtle, but it creates this sense of seamless reality. So the large world coupled with a lot of people running around interacting with you really pays off in Battlefield 4. Destruction has always been a core feature of the Frostbite engine. It's the evolution of the way the environment is impacted by gameplay. Everything from the smallest spark colliding, but also gigantic chunks of debris that crumble when they impact the ground. The guys on Battlefield 4 have been working on something called Levolution. Levolution is really about the concept how you can drastically change a multiplayer map into something different. It could be anything from a big building collapsing or to a dam breaking or anything really big game changer to the level. A recent feature that we've put in, and you'll see in Battlefield 4, is our networked water simulation. So what this means is all players will see the same wave in the same position at the same time. And this leads to some pretty exciting cat and mouse type of gameplay where you're ducking down and going up and you can kind of peek around as you drive in your boat. It will no longer uh, swim on a flat surface. Instead, it will be affected by the different waves and everything. And that comes to everything from living characters that are swimming, but also to the ragdolls. Something like a jet crashes into the ocean, you'll see the water react and, and the debris will then float on the waves. It's a very, very cool dynamic engine. Things just happen and it seems right. Take cover! In Frostbite 3, we've made a priority of, of much more believable, emotionally believable characters. There's a whole slew of features in Frostbite that support that, and one of the most important is the way a person's eyes look. The way we render characters is better than ever before. We're doing subsurface scattered models. We have parallax animation in the iris. You'll notice it looks like a real eye. You'll back me up, right? Frostbite 3 is so much more powerful than any engine I ever used before. And it's not just the specific features and the framework, it's the fact that we're collaborating with other teams around the world. In the past, before we had the Frostbite team, we were building a new engine every time and we were kind of stumbling constantly. Now, to, to have the team here to focus on new releases with new goodies means that we as a team can focus on the creative side to deliver better games, better experiences. Today, it's used by a lot of different genres, so everything from racing games to real-time strategy games and RPGs. So in Battlefield 4, when the building collapses, the dust starts expanding, the debris is falling, the sparks are flying, the boats are ramping off of waves. All of this is because of Frostbite 3. 